Okay, folks, I'm uh, currently running a 60-second ad, and when that ad concludes, we will start our stream. Uh, there might be a bit of more echo um, than uh, previous streams um, because I had uh, a large item in the room that I'm currently working in that I moved out of the room, and that may uh, cause the echo to be uh, much more. Um, but uh, that's what we're going to deal with, and I apologize for that. Uh, as always, just waiting for this uh, pre-roll ad thing to go down, and then we'll start the stream. Uh, that is just so that folks that are coming in for the next 20 minutes or so don't have to see an ad, which is nice. It's a nice little thing we can offer. I um, uh, should be able to start the stream proper in just a moment or two. Uh, uh, wait for that to go. And then, of course, we'll do the intro, see if people want to hang out for a bit, and then hopefully more folks will join us for the actual build, um, uh, you know, and spend some Monday uh, evening with us. But we'll get started with the actual thing in just a moment or two. Okay. Hello and welcome to the Build with Bear uh, workshop. My name is Pat Bear. I'm here to build a model kit and hang out with you. I'm throwing the Bear Cave, the Lego, the site, the moat in the chat. If you're currently a subscriber, you can throw it in there. Harold, thank you for hosting. Um, uh, welcome, everybody, uh, to the stream. As always, we are going to hang out for a little bit here in the pre-show. Um, this is my last build stream in this apartment. Hi, Lashbrook. Uh, this is... Uh, you know, I, look, I, I've traveled a little bit. Hi, Aristophan. I, I've done some streams from uh, office, but this is primarily where streaming has happened. Uh, okay. Uh, I am not going to record locally. Instead, I'm going to rip that, so that's fine. Um, my laptop does not enjoy local recordings while I am streaming, and that is fine. Uh, so we won't do that, and I'll just pull the recording off of uh, uh, Twitch and just upload that, and that's fine. Um, takes a little longer to download it. Not a big deal in the end of the, at the end of the day. Hi, everybody. Uh, yeah, so this is the last build stream of the month and of this apartment. Um, in the second hour, we will draw a name, and that person will win a bunch of Lego sets because uh, I tried to do a Lego giveaway at the end of last month, kits that I've built on stream uh, that have been broken down and packaged together in one box. Um, but that... Uh, a uh, person took a while to get back to me and then was like, oh, and hey, you know what? Just give them away to somebody else. So it took so long that now we're going to do that this month. And that's okay. Uh, but this will be the last time we do that because going forward, uh, I'm not going to be keeping kits. There'll be some kits that I keep that will go for display purposes and kind of rotate in and out. But especially for the next couple of months, uh, I'm not looking to store things in, uh, you know, it, uh, and have those things ready to go. Um Oops, this popped out. This thing looks to pop out. Uh, but yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to building. Again, there's going to be an echo tonight, and I apologize for that. Um, there used to be a uh, on its side a, uh, um, what do you call it? Uh, oh, uh, uh, a mattress. And I put that mattress out on Sunday, So, which is good because it makes my life easier. But it's bad because it was definitely absorbing uh, some of the echo that was in this place, which is over towards some sound. And uh, we unfortunately will have to deal with that. But that's going to be okay. I hope you're doing all right. Again, we're just going to be, you know, building some stuff tonight. Um, uh, I have one more stream left in this apartment, which will be tomorrow. I will be streaming from uh, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern, playing some Hearthstone. And that will be the last stream I do in this uh, here. But tonight is obviously the last build stream. And then, as I said, I do have one more stream left in me uh, tomorrow. Uh, and then on Wednesday, I move to my Airbnb, which I'm excited about uh, going to, and uh, move out of the apartment here. Um, doesn't sound echoey to me. Good, Lashbrook. That's good to hear. I hear the echo, but um, I'm glad you're not hearing it. Uh, that is good news. Um, but I definitely hear an echo more than I've heard it previously. Um uh, yeah, I've gotten stuff set up. I went and so a thing that I didn't want to happen uh, in the lead up to my move. Uh, and we'll go to the overhead in a minute. I'm just waiting for a few more folks to join us, see if anybody else will come in. People, you know, come in on, on their own and that's fine. Um, but uh, we'll wait a little moment or two. So um, my big one of the things I didn't want to have happen as I got ready for the move was I didn't want to run out of kits because in another world you know, I just go to Target or I go to the Super Kmart 
and I pick up a Lego set. You know, like there's toy stores, I can get Lego. I can go to a, a hobby shop and get a model kit if I need it. Well, I don't want to do that now. So I had kits waiting for me. And then I was like, well, I'll just take them with me on my luggage. Well, it turns out my luggage, I'm, I'm a little worried about uh, uh, filling everything up. So I just took all the, the three high-grade model kits, uh, took all the things out, put them in Ziploc bags, big bags, and then put them in a box. And I shipped that out to myself in South Carolina. So that way I don't have it. So I have uh, the rest of this kit to build uh, today and Thursday, if applicable, and Saturday, if applicable. And then I also have a Lego set. It's a 200-piece Lego set. And I figure I'll do that if I need, you know, like, if I can stream. Because, again, I don't know if I can stream on Thursday and Saturday. I hope I can. I don't know if I'll be able to stream on Thursday and Saturday simply because I won't know till I get to the Airbnb and test uh, and do a stream test if it's going to work. Uh, my hope is maybe I'll be near the router and I could just plug in an Ethernet cable because I'll bring an Ethernet cable. Or maybe I'll be in the same room as the, the router and it'll work great or I'll be right near it. Uh, I don't know. Uh, and again, if I do stream on Thursday and Saturday, that will be from 8 p.m. till 10 p.m. Eastern because quiet hour starts at 10 p.m. And I, wanna, I want to respect that because what I don't want to do is have to leave my Airbnb last minute and find another place to stay. <laughs> really can't deal with that. So I'm not going to deal with that. Let's see. Um, all right. I'm going to retweet the tweet here and let's go to the overhead. Uh, I, you know, it's always nice to just let people know it's going. Um, the Easy 8. Uh, if, you, if you missed the stream on Saturday, we started the Easy 8. We did the hands here uh, and we did one leg. We're going to work on the next leg. I got some part, components uh, set up for that. Uh, if you don't know the Easy 8, uh, this is... So there's this, the RX-78. Then there's the RX-79, the RX-79G. This is the EZ8. It's a lineage. This kit was built, or sorry, this kit was uh, released in the year 2000. This is a 20-year-old kit, which is why we're not going to try any of the uh, water transfers or dry transfers. I'm not even going to worry about that. We'll do stickers. Stickers should, theoretically, these stickers, theoretically, will work and we'll know because when we finish this other leg we are going to move on to the head this kit does the arms the legs then the head then uh then the waist and then the chest and then the backpack it is an odd kit and its order is weird because it's from the year 2000 and they're figuring things out i should also say if you missed the stream on saturday uh there's no good way to see this but um because it's, it's been assembled. Um, there are screws. There are two screws in this arm and two screws in the other arm. And that's a weird thing, but that was, you know, they're trying to... Can these hold weapons? Can they move around quite a bit? Yes, there's a lot of flexibility uh, and it works out pretty well. So that is a benefit. Um, if you haven't seen the streams in a little while, uh, last week I sent my, uh, my desktop PC to South Carolina because I am moving there very soon. Um, so I set my, my gear there ahead of time and I've been running off my laptop, which, you know, is working out okay. I have a 26-inch a, a, a television monitor here that I'm using as a second screen and that has been hugely beneficial, not only for streaming and allowing me to have like uh, chat on one and then the, the uh, OBS in there, it'll allow me to... Um, uh, be able to see chat while I'm playing Hearthstone tomorrow night because that is my bonus gaming stream for this week will be tomorrow night I'm playing Hearthstone from 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern if you're available to come hang out it'll be fun it's the last day of the month so we'll try to uh, uh, rank up a little bit more in ranked uh, wild ladder because that is uh, generally what I like to do all right uh, sometimes when you're doing these connectors if you don't have this piece lined up just perfect when you start to press in it just moves it it doesn't connect it right. Uh, and sometimes you can force it, which we did there. And sometimes you need to separate everything and do it again. Um, so yeah, I've, uh, I got away with only shipping three boxes to my folks place. Uh, and I'm going to have two suitcases and a backpack. So I'll put one on the plane, which has a lot of electronics in it, a lot of gear, um, 
in some odds and ends, and the second one is in close and close in the other one. Uh, a tip that a friend gave me, which I thought of but hadn't really, uh, really, uh, you know, I, it, it had been a passing thought, but I hadn't really put much stock into it. But he recommended, and I thought was a really good idea. So uh, I shipped my two computer monitors. Um, and there's obviously a lot of foam and they were taped up and I did a good job of that. But also in the box that they were sent in were some clothes. So a way to get some clothes so I didn't have to bring too much with me. Uh, this is like, this is the stuff that I didn't, I wouldn't need, you know, like dress shirts and stuff, but I might need there because I will be uh, attempting to get work and perhaps I will be working in an office environment and I'll need dress clothes. So I, a lot of those dress clothes got shipped with uh, with that, um, which, you know, that's a very smart way to pack. And I have a blanket that I want to keep uh, that I'm going to wrap my computer or my television monitor in uh, TV. And I think that'll work out really good for that. Uh, you know, little tips and tricks. I'm, I'm learning as I go. Uh, so this just happened, I think, it like half an hour ago or so about 45 minutes ago, right before stream. Um, I got a text from my landlord going like, hey, so did you end up with movers or do you have, are you renting a truck? Do you have friends? Uh, to which I said, I hired uh, two movers. They'll be, they're going to show up with a commercial van and park out front. And I told them the time. And I said, we're going to go to um, a storage unit. And then I'm going to come back for, for some stuff that I'm taking with me. And I'll do a, a, a proper cleaning, uh, like a second cleaning. And they said, okay. Um, she's like, okay. Uh, and then she asked me a question, folks. And I, I want to hear from you what you think about this. She asked me if my movers that I've hired and spent money to hire, do you think they would or they could remove the fridge and stove? I live on the second floor and I'm paying these people money. Hello, John Robert. Hi, John Robert. Happy to have you here, friend. So I want to know from you, chat. You ever hear anything like that before? My landlord wants me to ask my movers, who I am paying money to, to move a stove and a fridge. I should also point out, that the gas, the uh, the gas, like obviously they would turn it off, but but like I'm paying for that to the second so that I can use my stove on the first. If I, if if on Wednesday I wake up and I want to cook something, I'm not going to. I'm going to go get lunch or whatever. Uh, yeah. Hi, Mr. Bob. <laughs> so it just puts me in a very awkward position because like. What I'm what what I did it well so John Robert what I what I said was I said was that wasn't part of the uh, um, uh, that wasn't part of the estimate that I was given because I didn't ask them to move those things so I don't know if they will want to do that which is true now if it was something like hey could you put this out to the curb. Like I've moved before and I've said like, hey, could you help me with this? I'm not taking it, but I want to get rid of it. And most of the time people were like, yeah, sure, no problem. But that's not a fridge or a stove. Those things are, as Mr. Bob points out, heavy items. Those are heavy, like nothing that my movers are, the most, the heaviest thing that my movers are working with right now is I have a desk uh, that is like a it's pretty heavy not really but it's kind of heavy but that's it and i've told them it's a kind of a heavy desk that's the one thing i got a dresser that's not bad uh so yeah the stove is mostly a gas stove not a laundry basket yeah it's like i don't and i know that she wouldn't have asked me this if it had been um you know oh no i i rented a u-haul and i have friends coming like i get she wouldn't have asked me then which, I, which makes sense. But also like, so what I'm going to, what basically what I'm going to do is, 
if they bring it up, junk removers would probably charge a few hundred dollars for that. Yeah, Mr. Bob. If they bring it up, I'm just going to, if my landlord, either of my landlords brings it up, I'll just say that wasn't part of my agreement with them. Uh, if you want to give them some cash to do it and offer them cash to do it, you could do that. But I don't, but that's not, I didn't ask them, that, that's not just something people can just do which is true and I think like totally reasonable and I think it is very unreasonable of them. Yeah. And I like, I get it. It's going to cost money to remove that. Uh, what I'm, uh, now, but here's the, the real thing. What I'm now thinking of like, uh, yeah. Um, so uh, the original plan was, uh, I've been Williamsburg. They're coming to Williamsburg. We're gonna take the. We're gonna pack up this stuff. We're going over to Greenpoint, where where my storage facility is. We go to the storage facility. Uh, I gotta give them my credit card. I filled out all the other paperwork, but I gotta bring my credit card in because I could email them all my paperwork. Uh, yeah, I move out on Wednesday, John Robert. Uh, so I so I, I give them the paperwork. Uh, you know, I finish the paperwork, pay whatever. Uh, thank you very much, John. I appreciate that, JR. Um, thank you. Um, so I filled out of the paperwork, moved my stuff into the storage unit. Those guys will leave. Uh, original plan was to come back to my Airbnb. Hi, Epic Open World. Um, here for the last apartment stream. Indeed, Epic Open World. This is the last build stream here in this apartment. Um, uh, uh, original plan was to come back here and then clean up because my Airbnb is three minutes away. Now I'm thinking about putting my suitcases in, in the van and just not coming back to clean up if they're going to give me problems. Uh, so one of the things that they asked me to do was clear out, um, they, they asked me to, to, to clear out some stuff. And I said yes, and I've cleared out most of the stuff that's been in here. There were a few things. There were there were things that were in this part when I moved in, and they're annoying to get rid of. So I have it, and I think that's gonna be. I don't think it's gonna be a problem, but I think it's gonna be a conversation we have, where I'm gonna have to be like, that's not. I don't know what that is. I didn't know if that was yours or like, which is true because there's stuff I don't know, and I haven't really asked, so I don't know. But I am really thinking about like I mean look I have to get from my either I have to get from uh, my storage facility here back here which is fine I'll figure that out or I have to get from uh, my storage facility to my Airbnb and I'm honestly just thinking about that as the option instead of leaving and coming back. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, I don't know. Uh, working on the leg here of this thing. Uh, hello, Lord Crashington. Uh, can they realistically do if you don't come back? Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. It, it, it Honestly, it really comes down to if the people that I'm that are moving my stuff are okay with me putting on a couple suitcases and I'll be like I'll put these on like whatever I think they'll be fine the main thing was that like I wanted to uh I have some stuff because I'm I'm my Airbnb is three minutes away the original plan was to just take some uh uh of my uh food stuff like one of the nice things is I'm, I'm not worried about like finishing up all my food tomorrow because I am going to be in New York until Sunday. So I'm just going to take that to the Airbnb. And I think that's, I honestly, that seems to be what I'm going to do. I'm just going to uh, get a car, like take, put the stuff on there and then take a car and then just leave the keys here um, and, uh, and leave it at that. It's not exactly how I want to play things, but I think it's the best choice. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I've got time to think about that stuff, and I will. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, hello, Enzo. Welcome, welcome. Welcome, uh, everybody. We've got a good crew here tonight. Um, we are, yeah, we are working on the EZ8. This is uh, a kit from the year 2000. That's right. Uh, oh, Chill Hartman is now following. Hell yeah. What up, James? Happy to have you following. You made it to a stream. You did. Welcome. Uh, this is the last build stream I'm doing in this apartment. This is where I've done most of my streaming. Uh, I've done a little bit of streaming at various random locations throughout the years, but this is primarily where I've streamed. Uh, Enzo is now following. Thank you very much. Appreciate that as well. Thank you, Enzo, uh, for the follow. Uh, and uh, uh, Enzo is hosting. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, welcome. Thank you for the host. That's very nice. Uh, lots of support, but yeah, um, yeah. This is a this is not my usual setup. If you're new to the stream, um, pretty recently we switched to doing like real 1080, like 16 by nine, like nice lighting. I did a green screen for a long time, um, but I'm running off my laptop because my desktop is on its way to South Carolina right now, which is where I will be on my way to at the end of the week. Uh, um, it is weird that when someone says from the year 2000 this day, I think of the old Conan sketch. It, it, it's, it's not weird. Uh, that sketch existed for uh, like a very long time. And in fact, when it hit the year 2000, they switched it to in the year 3000 because they didn't want to give up doing the bit. So they just changed it, but it's still the same bit. It's just they said the year 3000 instead of the year 2000. But yeah, I mean, that makes total sense that that is what you're thinking of because that bit existed for a long time. So if you're watching Conan at any point, of course. Um, I just purchased the Barbatos Lupus Rex. Oh, nice. Uh, I'm scared I might destroy the pieces. So Enzo, the nice thing about high grades is that like, you just have to take your time with it, right? Like, just take your time because it's a high grade, right? You know, it's like... Obviously, that it's a good high grade. It's one of the newer ones. Uh, uh, the last three years, high grades, I, I think, have gone leaps and bounds in quality. Uh, the big real piece of advice I can give you is, um, let's see, let me pull out a piece that we got to do. Okay, so, right, we're going to be pulling A31 here, right? So I'm pretty confident in my skills, right? So I'm going to go up right here. I'm just going to get really flush with it, and I'm going to clip, right? I did the clip. I pulled it there. A alternative, if you're feeling nervous about doing clip stuff, is on this side, instead of using this right here, flush, I'm going to go and clip it away from it. And then I'll do that the same thing on the other one. So that ends up with, and this is a little hard because of the background, so I'll use my hand. So this side here, very clean. I have pretty good snipper clips. Very clean. Um, these two sides, they have nubbins now. And now that the piece has been removed, I can flip around, use this side here, that you know, and get right up on it and snip these two little extra pieces off because now it's away from it. That is my biggest like piece of advice for people is that like, don't feel intimidated about clipping things, do it at your own pace. I'm sorry, I forget my camera's here. Normally my camera's in the front, it's over here because I'm using my webcam on the, the built-in webcam onto this. So just take, take your time with it, right? High grades, you're dealing with big pieces. When you get into master grade or a real grade, real grades are tricky. Real grades are tricky because they are 144 scale, but they are very detailed. They're like the master grade version uh, in the 144 scale. So you're dealing with really tiny pieces. But when you're dealing with uh, with something like this, like you, you've got a little bit more leeway. You've got a little more uh, space to to figure things out. Um, this was not a piece I needed yet. I actually just clipped that piece out and I didn't even need it. Um, but yeah, just take your time with it. Uh, and like, you know, uh, having good clippers, certainly I would say, you know, that, that that's helpful. Like these these were $15, but you know, whatever. Uh, real grades can be fun, but if you're newer, shop kits within the last few years. Yes. So uh, 
a great point, Def, especially with real grades, because the first few real grades that came out uh, structurally are annoying. They, they're like, the arms are wavy and need like blue tack, and they're like kind of frustrating to build. Uh, I've, uh, I'm not a huge fan of the very early real grades, but the modern real grades that have been coming out pretty recently have been pretty quality. And the Sazabi real grade is one of my favorite kits of all time. Uh, I think most kits should be fine when they start getting transforming mechanisms is when you might be careful. Yeah, my Zaku uh, 2's hit blast out if you look at it wrong. Yes. I mean, then, yeah, and then, especially if you're going to be posing things, if you are if you want, like, a battle scene, you want to do stuff like that, then you got to start getting, like, a little bit of the blue stuff in there, the blue tack, uh, because you don't want to use glue, but blue tack might give you more um, strength in the, uh, in the, in the part. Uh, but as always, the real secret is to take your time. I'd recommend, uh, if you're nervous about model kit building, don't stream while you're doing it because that's where you make mistakes like because you're trying to do too many things at once. Blue tack represent. Indeed, Mr. Bob. Uh, you can get a lot of it for very little. And then you just have a lot of it. Um, uh, I actually want to open an online Gunpla store when I can. Hell yeah. I mean, like, uh, look, there is a version of Pat Bear some years ago, there was a road less taken where I would have ended up in a hobby shop full time. Uh, of course, they never pay well, so you got to own one, and it would have been a would have been a, a hard thing for me to figure that out. But like like getting to the process of that, but it always felt like a thing that eventually I was going to do because I, I loved working uh, hobby shop retail. Um, I primarily worked in anime import stuff. Um, but eventually probably would end up a hobby shop. Uh, like I've damaged two different parts of one of the G-Force feet because the me mechanic to, to expand them requires a bit too much force. Lastbrook, yeah, that kit seems like it is pretty advanced in a way that it would not be fun to do on like a stream. But yeah, I mean, there's definitely a version of Pat Bear that uh, like... Um, would have stuck in retail. Uh, I worked at an anime import store um, and it was a great job. And eventually I would, don't build, <laughs> model kids or play video games on stream. Yeah, Epic Global World. I mean, like, you know, Hearthstone is a thing where like I still goof up, but I can like, turn-based stuff I think I can handle pretty good. I think like turn-based um, uh, uh, gameplay I think works really well. But I know, like I... I don't do well with action games while, like I'm trying to do other stuff. Like Pokemon, that kind of thing, like I think I can handle it. It's been a while since I streamed some Pokemon, but uh, eventually I want to do a randomizer thing in the future. Uh, or like, um, but yeah, the, the, the idea of doing uh, streams where I have to like focus, like, mm, I don't know. Model kits still require a lot of focus, but I, I've, got, I've gotten better at doing it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I I, uh, I always thought that someday I would end up um, working in a shop or owning a shop. Uh, there is a Pokemon MO clone. Yes, Epic World. I've seen that. And there's also like some new software for randomizers uh, for folks that do randomizers and Nuzlocke runs that I've been looking at um, that seems pretty cool. Because one of the things I, I, I always liked about those things was having like the interfaces and seeing the Pokemon and and you know like all that stuff and I was like oh, I, I'd be into that maybe someday uh, it seems like the hardest part in buying inventory in bulk yes and so uh, to to get stock requires to have uh, uh, to have cash or credit um, you know most likely any online business that is dealing with um, distribution of product uh, eventually you can get deals. You can start making deals with people, but you're not going to have those deals when you start. So you're going to be paying, you know, you're, you're going to have to have the money to, to make those things work. And then, uh, and that's, that's a whole thing. It requires a lot of effort and energy uh, to, to make those connections. Uh, uh, so, you know, a lot of people that go into small business stuff like that, like, 
they either have connections, uh, they have investors, they have family, they have small business people uh, that, that look to invest in those kind of things that are trying to help out their community or their scene or, or, or things like that. Um, uh, it's not altogether impossible. Uh, you also could uh, go the route that some people do, which is you work a very difficult job for many, many years and you save every penny. Uh, and then eventually you quit that job to pursue your dream uh, and you're, it just it took you took a very long time to get done, but that is a possibility. That is an avenue that some people do. Um, or uh, you um, you make a deal to take over someone else's company and uh, you know pay them back with with loans and various other. Uh, avenues and adventures and eventually you pay them back for all the money you needed to get that uh, to take over their company uh, none of it is easy and I'll say this I haven't done it hasn't been my route uh, close to having awesome credit yeah my friends just bought a hobby store. That's awesome. I mean, I would say now is probably a good and terrible time to get into retail. Um, online retail is certainly a little different than uh, store retail. Uh, I'm sure there are people looking to sell, but also I can't, no Gunpla, or RC car. So Mr. Bob, I mean, that's, you know, like, so, uh, Good hobby store owners know what brings people into the door and knows what keeps people coming back, right? So they are marketing to an audience they've built and they are catering to that audience they've built. That's not to say that they, and, and sometimes people get in their heads, this is what works and this is what doesn't work. And maybe they're right. And maybe they're being short-sighted and maybe there are opportunities they don't know presented themselves. Uh, Got to build up the Gundam scene in Carolinas. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, so that's the thing, right? Um, the area I'm going to be living in uh, is pretty touristy. Uh, hello, Craven. Welcome. It's a pretty tour touristy area. So I'm hoping that uh, that there are some hobby shop stuff and uh, and that there are locals who are looking for things that and, and all that. Like, I don't know. I haven't done the research if there are hobby shops in my area. Um, I am moving, Craven. Uh, I'm going to be going to South Carolina uh, uh, very soon. And uh, I will be there for a while. It is not a permanent move. This is a necessity, unfortunately. But it is not, uh, at, at the moment anyway, it is not, the plan is to be able to return in the future to New York um, or somewhere else, depending. Um, uh, some hobby store owners uh, look down very stern and gumpa because they don't use glue. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's just some people, right? Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, uh, I try to buy stuff from uh, uh, from Gundam Planet and from USA Gundam Store. Um, I do my best to... Uh, and Gundam Planet and USA Gundam Store both have physical locations as well as doing an online business. Uh, so so I, I like being able to support them. Um, but yeah, uh, I haven't... Really, I have not done the research of local areas, if there are hobby shops, if there are places that sell stuff, what they're... You know, inventory looks like what their, you know, what their vibe is. I haven't done any of that research. Um, Joel Hartman says, hold up LA Dodgers jersey with bear on the back. Come to the West Coast. I mean, look, at some point, probably, but really, when it comes right down to it, uh, through all of this, the, the real big thing is that, like, uh, the industries that I do have to come back before I can do them, right? Or I have to look for new industry opportunities. And that's okay, and I'm not against that. 
but my next step, my thought of next step from live theater, which I was interested in maybe moving away from if the right opportunities present themselves, um, was conventions, like behind the scenes stuff of conventions, because I have a lot of connections to that industry. And I was like, maybe it's a time to get serious about that. And I literally applied for a job. Um, but uh, it went away, like that went away. Uh, the job I applied for, they were like, we are not going to be hiring anyone for this job. Uh, and I was like, yeah, you shouldn't hire anyone right now. Everything is weird. Um, hopefully things will work. Uh, Epic World says Aaron Trites uh, made it work on the West Coast. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, it seems like he's doing okay. Uh, I mean, I don't know for for specifics for sure uh, how Aaron is doing. Um I hope he's doing okay, but I, I don't know for sure how, how business is. I know that, like, obviously things are tough for retail. Um, uh, I know he was doing eBay business as best he could, uh, but with comic books not shipping to places for a little bit, that's rough, and people not being able to be in stores certainly makes things hard, and just, like, all kinds of stuff. There's, like, a lot of stuff was going on with Aaron, uh, with, you know, his industry, so... I'm hoping that he's able to, to make it work. Uh, and of course, uh, it would have been his first San Diego Comic-Con would have been this year, which would have been huge for him because there aren't a lot of, like he has so many connections in the industry that like there would have been events and he would have been bringing people foot traffic in and the interest in people coming to, to yeah, it's like, oh yeah, I'll go to a comic book shop for a signing. Sure. Like, that kind of stuff would have, the you know, would have been really good for him, and uh, so that's obviously rough. Uh, it's been rough for a lot of people. Uh, uh, somebody asked me about this uh, if I was going to be coming back up for convention season here in New York at the end of the year, and um, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with me in the future. I would like to. Um, I had in my head that, well, if I come up in October for New York Comic Con to work at, because I, I, I was offered a gig, they pay for my hotel and do all that. So I was like, well, if they pay for my travel up, I could bring some clothes with me and switch them out uh, at my storage unit and then like refresh my clothing. <laughs> I was like, oh, that, that, that might be good. Um, uh, I don't know. Oh, uh, PlayFox is now following. Thank you, PlayFox. Welcome, welcome. Uh, happy to have you here. Um, but I don't know. Like, uh, it, it, it's all kind of up in the air, and I don't know how any of this stuff is going to work out. Um, Pat, if you're going to work conventions, I want you to be a PR person. Jeff Buckler talked about smart fridges. <laughs> no, so um, if I work conventions... Uh, I am usually work uh, booths. Uh, so uh, at Anime NYC last year, I worked um, that event for Crunchyroll. Um, and I was giving away, I got put in charge of, because uh, they had people that were like working hourly and they have managers. So I was help, I was in charge of helping with setup, which I did a very good job with because I am I know what I'm doing. And then I did a lot of um giving away free stuff and making sure people got free things and, and dealing with that stuff, uh, which is which worked out okay because I'm pretty good at that. I did lose my voice. I have to be better about that. Here was the main problem. I went to a party the first night uh, and because I wanted to get to know my coworkers because I didn't, I only knew one of them. So I wanted to get to know my coworkers and, and talk to them, uh, the people that, are, you know, the other producers uh, or managers, assistant managers or whatever. And I definitely lost my voice, like, just shouting over the din uh, was not good. All right, so this is the wrong, is this the wrong piece? What's going on here? So I want to go. Okay, so this is wrong. All right, fix this. Um, but yeah, I mean, I uh, again, I don't know if I'm going to be working conventions. I have no idea if that is in the cards uh, right now. Um, I will no more at some point towards the end of the year because I don't know if those conventions are going to happen. And then also, um, I agreed to work those events 
part of the reason why I don't know I think it's the only reason but one of the reasons why is uh, as somebody who was living in New York it was cheaper to have me do those events than other people because I am I was local oops so I'm, I'm a little I'm wondering if they're gonna want that you know to, to get me up from South Carolina or not and if they do sure I don't know I mean getting to come back up would be nice uh, again, I, I just, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know about a lot of the stuff. I'm flying by the seat of my pants when it comes to a lot of things right now. Uh, I'm starting to worry it's going to be a two-year thing. Yeah, I mean, like, here's the thing, right? Um, we're not done with anything. Nothing's solved or fixed. Uh, we're all still in this together and we're all still figuring out what's going on but yeah I don't know I don't know what get what what's going to be forced back to normal quote unquote and what is never going to be the same I don't know uh, I want to go to smaller cons I was just done I'm just about done with PAX yeah yeah Mr. Bro I mean I was talking about going to PAX Unplugged in Philly if that was happening because that is a fun little convention that I was like, oh, that'll be fun to go to. Um, but I don't know if I'm going to do that because uh, it's the same weekend as Anime NYC. So if uh, Crunchyroll wants me to come up and work for them for Anime NYC, I would rather go and work an event and do that than go to Philly. But I also don't know if I'm going to be back in New York. Like... I don't know when I'm going to be back in New York or how any of this is going to work out. I literally do not know. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, Mr. Bob, like there, there's a con supposed to be happening in July in uh, Tampa, I believe. I believe Tampa Comic Con is like the first convention that's coming back. Now, if that actually happens, nobody, you know, nobody knows for sure what, what that entails, what that means, what that's going to be. But uh, I, I, I imagine that that there will be, I imagine they will say they're doing like temperature checks, but probably won't. And I'm sure they say they will be doing like uh, wellness checks, but probably won't because it's Florida. Um, but I don't know. I don't know how that's going to work. Uh, don't go to Florida. Yeah. Yes, Epic World. I don't think it should be happening. But I think it's going to happen because of Florida. Um, a few years, a bunch of small cons showing up SoCal in the summer. It looks like it's really hard to get one running long term. Yeah, I mean, all of these, it, it, all of that is really hard to do long term. I'm having some trouble with this with this one here, folks, getting this piece, this whole thing together here. I apologize. Uh, this was this did not seem difficult when I did it, when I did the other uh, leg. So I apologize. But this seems to be taking its sweet dang time. Really goofing it up. Okay, so let's go like this. And then that goes like that. Harold says, speaking as a Floridian, don't come here. Yeah. Going to be real bummed about no pack south next year. Yeah, Lastbrook, I mean, like, I don't know. I don't know if that's going to happen. Uh, I hope. Uh, Santini says it wasn't going to go to this year, but the major national scale model convention was going to be in Texas this year. Finally got canceled. Yeah. Uh, yeah, all the baseball players, and that just seems like that's going to, the basketball players that are there, all of that seems bad. All of it seems bad. It just all seems bad is what I'm saying. What I'm trying to get at is, this all seems bad. Yeah. I mean, Vegas is back, baby. Although now they're doing a lot of like, oh, uh, Vegas, the Nevada, not Vegas. Vegas is like open for, we're open for business. We're doing things. Um, but Nevada is like, 
hey, wear masks. What are you, what are you, what are you doing? What are you, what's going on here? But yeah, that uh, that first weekend that there was MMA, all the all the video and photos that were coming out were there was like no masks where were being worn at all. I was just like, oh no, it's already Las Vegas. Uh, I have no idea what to stock up for this time, but I'm getting ready for lockdown too. Yeah, Mr. Bob. I mean, like, part of me is it, pretty happy about the idea of like if if there is going to be stuff. Um, I am trying to pay attention to what's going on in South Carolina. Um, my, the area that I'm moving to is theoretically partially open. You know, where like there are businesses that are open. I am going to do my best to avoid that stuff, but also I am going to be in a position where I need to work because I um, a lot of the stuff that I did here. Uh, in New York, like some of that stuff I can keep doing, some of that stuff I can't keep doing. So I'm eventually going to have to like really buckle down and get work going, uh, which might mean dealing with working with people that are not being cool. My hope is that I end up in a place where I can properly take care of myself. I don't believe the government of Nevada can tell Vegas what to do, sadly. They just laugh and say, fuck you. Well, that is a shame. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, you know, not necessarily thrilled about it. Uh, I do know that uh, the hope is that I just end up somewhere. I end up doing some work that I can do on the Internet from there, do local uh, work from home, and then just figure it out as I go. We'll see. I don't know. Uh, Casinos are not really in Vegas. Yeah, that that is accurate. They're not technically Vegas casinos. Um, What area in general? Modelers around Columbia, the host of the National Convention a few years ago. so I am uh, uh, I am going to be outside of Myrtle Beach, a town outside of near Myrtle Beach is where I'm at. So uh, so that is that is the general area. I'm not going to get too specific because it is my parents' house. But yeah, I am in the Myrtle area. I uh, I fly into Charleston. And my folks drive for two hours to come get me because it's a direct flight and JetBlue does a direct flight there. And that is really nice. Uh, and then we just take our time doing our thing. Uh, yeah, my um, one of my very good friends, his, uh, his parents retired nearby and he's actually been down there. They... Um, uh, they're going back. They're going back to New York at the end of July. At least they, I, uh, it's the last time I talked to them. They were so we're all, we're gonna have like a month to hang out. Oh, of course, yeah, I understand. Appreciate that, Santini. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm gonna be checking out that area, um, finding stuff. Uh, hobby shop stuff is something that, like, certainly, like, I, you know, I want to know what's going on there. Uh, especially retail stuff like the retail experience I do have like that's certainly a thing that I you know I'm probably you know looking at retail look what I want to do is work from home in some internet capacity and not leave my parents house as as much as possible or you know leave it as little as possible and kind of hang out there and and bunker down but that doesn't seem like it's necessarily going to be a reasonable outcome Uh, so or, or plan. So, uh, yeah. No, uh, yeah. So that's kind of where I'm at there. Uh, but yeah, I've been saying, you know, kind of saying South Carolina mostly, but it is the Myrtle Beach area. Uh, that is where I will be staying um, for a while. I don't know how long. I don't know how long. One thing I have to do is I have pre orders. I have two pre orders uh, for model kits that I, a couple months ago, that are supposed to go to New York. And I can't change them online because I paid a different, it would be a different sales tax. So I have to uh, call a number. And I was like, that is a thing I will do in July because they are not shipping for a while. 
but that is a thing I will have to do. Uh, it's on my list of things to do when I get there, and I'm not worried about that. Uh, on that list also includes uh, PAX Online. Uh, I will be submitting. i am already been, been submitted on a panel someone else is doing. I will be submitting two panels to PAX Online that I know of right now. Uh, uh, you can have your mail redirected fairly easily online. Yes, Blue, that is true. But like, um, uh, I just want to make sure I get the stuff I need. I, I did I did get a forwarding address, but since I ordered this stuff pre-order, I can change it and pay a little bit different and not really worrying about it. Um, but I have forwarded, so things should be going to my parents uh, in the future. Uh, got a lot of... Uh, I don't think you're going to hear too much, but we, we were getting some fireworks. It rained so hard that in parts of New York today, it hailed. Uh, it came down hard and fast. Uh, and so I was like, well, maybe that'll deter our nightly fireworks displays. Apparently, that did not deter our nightly fireworks displays. Uh, come to the Pats panel or on the Billion Days of Packs. Yes. Now, um... Yeah, so uh, I will be submitting uh, uh, two panels. Um, the goal is to uh, to feature some f favorites, some some PAX guest favorites, but also have a few people who haven't done the panel before uh, because of various reasons. Also, you know, like the fact that they haven't been able to travel to PAX or that's just not in their convention circuit, the idea that I have that. So that's going to be pretty fun. Uh, I'm excited about that and putting the, the word out there. But like since I have till the end of July, that was a thing where I was like, nope. Uh, they're wanting many panels to be pre-recorded. Rishvan, that makes sense. And if they want that for me, like that is something that I could definitely pull off. Um, I think that... Uh, Yes, I mean, that's definitely Epic of World. I, I think that is definitely a thing. And a lot of time, travel is a big part of that, right? So that is some, something, certainly something that I'm looking to. Also, there was a convention that I was going to do in New York that um, isn't happening. And I was like, hmm, well, if this, if this convention isn't happening, I could just do the panel I was going to do there at PAX. Uh, and that would be a very uh, fun time. So I, I am looking at that. Uh, trying to get uh, some stuff together. But yeah, I mean, I could see some of it. You know, mine's at, mine are entertainment panels. I don't know if the vibe would work great pre-recorded in some instances. Uh, but also, you know, we're not going to have a live crowd. So, I mean, the live crowd will be online. And you won't be able to hear them. So that is a different vibe. I don't know. All right, we finished our legs. Our legs are done. It is time. We are going to get started on the head, and then we will um, uh, we will continue uh, uh, after a pause for the calls in a couple minutes. But let's get started on the head. We'll get a little bit of this done here. Get a little work done on this. Um, I will say thanks for everybody for being here. This is a very busy Monday for me. Uh, Mondays are, are generally not this many people. I appreciate that folks are... Um, are here tonight. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, Blue asked, do you ever custom mod your kits? So I don't do much modding. Um, we did one kit bash project. Uh, we took uh, uh, various components from some Iron Blood Orphan kits and we made our own Iron Blood Orphan kit, uh, our own style of it, uh, which was really fun. But I generally don't do, I, I usually don't purchase aftermarket mods. I don't, uh, I don't really uh, uh, do that too often. Uh, most of the time, we are we are focusing on the construction of said kits. Uh, that has kind of been the primary focus of these streams. I'm not opposed to it, uh, aftermarket stuff or, or mods, but it's just not a thing that really has come up. Um, all right. Ooh, is that is that glue? Is that the does that mean? Does that want me to glue that? I think that might. What? What? I don't know. Yeah, that might. It might want me to glue the antenna. Let's see if you can see that. There is a little paint. That, that might be a glue brush. Well, 
I don't know if I have my glue. So the antenna may not go on. We may be dealing with that later because that is, I might have glue somewhere, but I definitely packed it up. I, I don't know if I have, if I've packed it up with access or if I've packed it up and we'll just have to not have an antenna on this kit. Uh, I'll let you know, but right now, I don't know. Um, but yeah, thanks for everybody for here seeing tonight. We got another hour left in the stream, so don't worry about that. Um, I will say, hey, uh, I'm streaming again tomorrow night. If you want something a little different than uh, than this, uh, because once a week I like to do a stream that isn't model kit building. Uh, it's a gaming stream that I, that I normally do, and uh, the next gaming stream is tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Eastern till question mark probably 11. Uh, and I'm just going to play Hearthstone because I don't have my PC right now. I'm using my laptop, and that's a game that I know I can stream. It won't even look as good as previous, but, like, whatever. It's Hearthstone. It doesn't necessarily look great anyway, comparatively, uh, and it's fine. But uh, that is that is the next game plan uh, for my bonus stream uh, is uh, I have a, a couple decks I like that are uh, wild, uh, that that can you know wild is uh, their standard, which is like you can use any of these cards from the last couple of expansions, and then wild is you can use any card that came out. Hi, crazy like fox, welcome, welcome. Um, so I'll be doing that tomorrow. Uh, I'll try to re rise the ranks with with my Galakrond invo involve evolve deck, my invoke evolve deck. Or my uh, Galakrond Rush deck for Warrior. I've got two decks I like. They're both silly and weird. And they uh, either do very well or do very poorly. But that is uh, that is how they operate. So this 20-year-old sticker went on with no problem. This was one of the easiest applications of eye stickers I've had in a very long time. I didn't even have to adjust anything. That rules. Uh, these, as I said, these are 20-year-old stickers, and I did not know if that was going to work, and I'm very pleased. I've I built old kits before, but sometimes the the kits that come out in the 90s, the stickers don't really want to cooperate. Um, so the fact that this one did was was a nice, pleasant surprise. And then this goes on. This is L25. Okay, and there, oh, we got another sticker to put on. Um, again, we will be taking a pause for the cause in a moment or two, uh, an hour, you know, usually uh, an hour into the stream, I take just like a brief pause. I don't play ads or anything, but I just like talk about ways you can support the channel if you want to. Uh, also, somebody um, who is a currently a subscriber, they do not have to be a uh, in, present, but if they are a subscriber, a subscriber is going to win some Lego sets that I have uh, that I built previously. I disassembled those Lego kits. Uh, they're all uh, boxed up in one box, uh, uh, and I'll be sending that out to a subscriber uh, who has not previously won uh, before. That is the only caveat: is you have to be a subscriber. You could you could be gifted. You could be gifted a sub. It could be your first month. You could be using Prime, paying cash, being a, a gifted subscriber, um, or uh, but the only thing is yeah, you can't have won previously, and that is the only caveat to that. And this is also the last month I'm doing this because it is not sustainable. And uh, a lot of the stuff that I take for granted, I'm going to have to take less for granted when it comes to the move, which is transportation. Um, I don't currently have a license and there isn't much of a public transportation system uh, where I'm going. There's some, but not a lot. And so either I need rides uh, or I need, uh, or, or I'll be using my father's bicycle, uh, which is not, Gonna, which can't be my primary mode of transportation. It just can't. So, uh, so stuff like getting to the post office all the time is a thing that like ha anything that I really want to do has to be like under consideration that I am on two different people's schedules. Uh, now my folks do have two cars, which benefits me, makes things a little easier. 
Uh, but uh, I am, you know, where is here? Like I can just go and also the, there are cabs, there is Uber, but you know, that's that. the goal is to, to save up some money and, and, you know, figure things out. And I really can't just be, it would not make sense for me to get a Uber to take me to the post office to mail some kits because I want to do that once a month. So we're going to end that program. It's been very nice to do. I was really happy to do that. Uh, as it continues, all Lego sets will be donated. Uh, there is a, a, a service uh, that you can mail uh, Lego sets to. So I will just always have like a box. And when that box gets full of Lego Legos, because they, they just want the raw Legos, uh, I'll mail that out. And I will continue to do that because that is a very easy thing to do. That is a nice way to do that. As for model kits, I'll be saving some stuff that I like and other things will just be disposed of. Go away. All right. So I think they want me to glue this, but I'm just going to be placing it. And uh, we'll just have to, it'll just have to, it'll just have to do. It really does look like they want me to glue this in. That's just not going to happen. Just gonna have to place it, and all right. And this is gonna go like that. Oops, flew right out. It's okay. We'll just do it like that. All right. Oh, that looks pretty good. Uh, oh, that's because. That's because it's not the only antenna. It's also M11. M11. M10. Oh, that was 11. L28. Ah. I see now. Okay. Give me one second to find this one piece. We're going to finish up the head and then we'll take our pause for the cause, as I always say. Uh, no, that's L28. Uh, this is a very tiny one. I can understand why they were like, glue this in, because it is very small. Look at that. That's so small. Good to go on there. All right, yeah, let's get this together. Uh, so we still have to put this in here. Yeah, they definitely want me to glue that. And I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna worry about it. Just place it in there for photos and then call it a day. L26. Uh, I would say for a, year, a kit that came in the year 2000, I mean, the only issue so far we've had was it was weird to have to have screws in the hands. Um, that is that is always a little weird. But I would say that has been the only thing so far that has given me any sort of pause or any sort of worry has been that, which is pretty good, all things considered. Um, okay, so this is going to go on this. Um, let's see. And okay, let's get this piece on. And then we'll wrap things up here with the head. Okay, our head is done. Completed the head. Okay, so we're going to take a pause for the cause. If you're new to the stream, I'm just going to talk about ways you can support the channel if you're so inclined. You're in no obligation to do so, but if you'd like to, you're more than welcome to. If you're currently a subscriber, you can throw the Bear Cave, the Lego, the Scythe, the Mo in the chat. Let the people know that you are a subscriber and you're here. Uh, I appreciate it very much. Thank you to everybody. Um, 
Uh, bits and coins always appreciated. If you donate 300 or more, um, you're sharing emotes because uh, we're celebrating pride here on Twitch. Um, gifting subs also unlocks emotes and uh, uh, continuing your sub does as well. Uh, and people will randomly get access to those emotes uh, if they don't already. Um, but thank you all, everybody who's here. If you're not a subscriber, you don't have to become one. You could if you wanted to, but you don't have to be. You're in no obligation to do anything like that. Just being here is great. You don't even have to chat if you don't want to chat. Because I know some people, they do not like being in the chat room. They don't don't like chatting. They just like watching the throwing it on, doing other stuff. Totally okay. Totally understand that. Um, again, you don't have to. But if you want to, if you want to use your Amazon Prime uh, linked to Twitch and get Twitch Prime, you get that token. You can use that. Uh, you can use cash money. Uh, you could gift some people subs. Uh, there's only a couple days left in the le to join the leaderboard uh, for that. Bits and coins, as I said, always appreciated. Um, I have a Patreon. I say if you want to join my Patreon, you should wait until July 1st to join the Patreon because uh, that's coming up. So why not wait till Wednesday and join the bookmark it, patreon.com slash patbear and join the Patreon on Monday. Uh, uh, but no obligation to do that uh, or Wednesday, I should say. Um, but as I said, I have a Patreon, and there's different levels, $1, $3, $5, $10. You're under no obligation to, to do that, of course. Uh, you could also make a donation directly to the stream. I have various ways to do that. Uh, all this goes to me buying kits and equipment. I am hoping that all of my gear makes it to South Carolina in one piece. If it does not, then I will be figuring out ways to replace that. I also buy model kits, and this is a great way to do that. Um... Uh, anything that comes in through Twitch, through uh, my YouTube uh, ad revenue, um, from Patreon, from donations, all goes to buying kits and equipment. Uh, shouldn't need much equipment, but I'm going to always need kits. Uh, speaking of which, I have an Amazon wish list. If you buy that, it'll go to South Carolina. There's a few things that I already got there because of my birthday, and I'm going to, I'm going to, Get, have a bunch of stuff from that. But here's the wish list. I try to keep it updated. Some things become unavailable and I either remove that to add later or I'm just leaving it up right now because you never know. Um, but there's Lego sets. There's uh, uh, model kits. There's some paper craft stuff. There's some glue kits. All kinds of different cool uh, kit uh, things that you can purchase there uh, that will be shipped to me, uh, to my parents' place in South Carolina and I will build it there. Um, so yeah, those are just a few ways to do that. Uh, also, uh, you could, if you wanted to, uh, uh, get me a gift card to USA Gundam Store, and then I'll buy something and build it, but I'll give you credit and thank you. Uh, and again, anything bought off my wish list from Amazon or something I buy in USA Gundam Store with money donated um, jumps the queue. So I have some Lego, I have some Lego, I have some model kits waiting for me to build them, but when people send me stuff, it jumps ahead of that. Because uh, the least I can do is is say, okay, well, I'll just do this. Um, uh, and if you buy a gift card, you get a code in your email, then you whisper me here on Twitch or send me a DM on Twitter. And uh, that's how that works. Uh, let's see. Uh, I have a Discord. You can join my Discord. We're going to get to back to building in just a minute or two. Actually, let me go. Let me go to this while we do this. Um, we're going to get back to building, but I'm just going to go through these pretty quickly. Uh, I have a Discord. Join my Discord. It's nice. Um and again, we do have to draw the name of someone who's going to win some Lego sets. Ah, that is good water. Um, so I have a Discord. It's really laid back. I post build photos after every stream. People tell me about the stuff that they've worked on. Uh, and post photos of things they're doing. They plug the stuff they're working on, which is really nice. It's a nice little community. Uh, if you're wondering about some anime to watch, well, the, this previous season, the spring season, is just about ended. The new stuff is going to start very soon. So Pat Bear's Anime Club uh, is a video series that I do. I talked about my two favorite shows from this season and two that didn't end up uh, finishing because of, uh, of the pandemic, and I hope come back. Uh, my next video will be a preview of some stuff I'm looking forward to Um some stuff that looks good and some stuff that looks just trashy, but also good. Um, stuff that, like, you get why I would be into it. Um, also, Bearing the List, uh, it's a video series I do every Wednesday. This past Wednesday's video is uh, outfits from uh, uh, Orange Cassidy, professional wrestler. 
uh, I updated from the previous week because literally the day I put out the last video, he wore a new outfit. So then this, so this, this one was to make up for that. Uh, I got a couple I filmed in the uh, for future that are about foods, including this coming Wednesday's one. So check that out. Um, all right. We'll talk about anime in a second. Uh, current stuff. Sorry, but uh, it's time to draw the winners. So this is uh, going to be a subscriber. I'm going to use a random number generator. This will be a current subscriber who has not won in the past. I have a list of everybody that has won before, so I will cross-reference it um, to make sure that lovely folks out there, like Sharks 2K doesn't win again. Um, let's see here. All right. Uh, and the winner is going to win the Lego Manta Ray Bomber, the Lego Golden Dragon, and the Le the Lego Samurai Mech, which are all Ninja Go stuff, and Ray's Speeder from Star Wars. Um, and let me hit some numbers here. And cross-reference to see if this person, who I believe was in chat, I don't know if they're still in chat, but they have not won in the past. Santini, 35, you are our winner. Uh, if you are still here, uh, feel free to say hi. Let me know if you're still in the chat. Uh, you just won some Lego sets. Um, uh, but I will be whispering you, uh, woo, yes. So Santini, um, when the stream is over, I'm going to whisper you here on uh, Twitch. So it'll be that little window thing next to your icon, next to the, your icon, uh, the whispers. I'll send you a whisper um, and uh, figure out how to get this to you. And uh, we'll, we'll mail this out. Uh, they're disassembled. They're small Lego sets. They're all disassembled. Uh, so that way, now you have some Lego to build. Uh and uh, yeah, let me, uh, I'll, I'll send you a message there, but congratulations uh, for that. Um, so let me close that out there. Uh, oh yeah, uh, yeah, if you want to send me a DM on Twitter, we can do that too. That That's totally fine. Uh, send me a DM because uh, uh, my DMs are open, so it'll just be a request and I will accept the request and we can chat on Twitter. That sounds great. Um, okay. Uh, that, yeah, you, it, it usually I end up saying a whisper to people, uh, and it works out okay because they, you know, sometimes they're not here in the room when they win. Uh, but yeah, enjoy your Lego sets. Uh, okay. Uh, all right. So I'm going to talk about some anime that I watched and we are going to go back to building. We are working on the waste here. There's nothing to really talk about this waste probably. Um, but I will talk about some anime with y'all. Uh, oh, uh, Dirty wants me to hit the gong, so I will hit the gong. Uh, I almost accidentally packed this up today, and I was like, wait, I have two streams left I uh, here before we leave, so I got to do this. Uh, hello, Dirty, and welcome. I'm going to hit the gong. Let me do this again. There, that was better. Enjoy that gong. Uh... Oh, Lord Crashton also wants to hear that gong. Well, while I have it out, I'll, I'll uh, hit the gong there, and then we'll get back to building. We hit that gong. Uh, yes, the number one gong, indeed. Uh, all right. So, Sachibato, President, It's Time for Battle, had episode 12. There was a week delay on the show. It should have been over a while ago, but it ended up uh, this week. Um... Double gong. Uh, oh, Epic Old World. Okay. Uh, a a a anime related question. Cyberpunk anime got announced. People lost their minds that it was Studio Trigger doing it. I could not tell if that was positive or negative. So Epic Open World. Trigger is a divisive company. I think they have made some interesting anime. They've also, they've also made some really horny anime that isn't like... So here's the thing, right? I'm going to be talking about next season, a horny anime, which is a show about high school kids, one of whom is attracted to another kid. They're trying to figure some stuff out, right? That's the whole thing. That's what the show is. But sometimes Trigger is like, we're going to do our Evangelion show. And it's going to be really weirdly horny for no reason and kind of creepy. Or Kill a Kill is very horny, and I don't know why. I mean, I do know why, but I don't know why. But then, like, 
they'll make something like uh, uh, SSSS Gridman. And I'm like, this just fucking rules. Like, Gridman was like a really interesting take on on that story. And like, uh, Little Witch Academia, I think is fantastic. So I think Trigger is like an interesting company to work on the cyberpunk franchise. I don't know how it's going to turn out. Because uh, they are an odd company. Um, I did not watch any of BNA, so I cannot ju- I cannot tell you about BNA, um, but because I just didn't watch it, so I, I don't have an opinion on that show. Um, uh, Cyberpunk game is going to be very horny. Yeah, I mean, who knows? Uh, Sniper Christian is a, is a defender. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, like, look, they're they're an interesting company. I, I think I've liked. I've liked some of theirs more than I've liked other of theirs. Uh, the Kill a Kill director? I mean, that that's totally possible. I don't know. I um, I don't give a shit about cyberpunk. I don't care. I uh, The tabletop stuff I played 15 years ago bored me to death. Uh, what I've seen of this game has not interested me at all. Uh, They have made some incredible missteps in talking about their game. Uh, uh, And I don't give a shit about it. So I don't really care about the anime. I mean, if it's good, I'll watch it. If it turns out to be good, I'll check it out. But I kind of don't give a shit about Cyberpunk 2020. Uh... Yeah, I don't know. Um, I have to answer this question. I'm not going to talk about that anymore because I don't have anything else to say about it. But I am going to answer Dirty's question because they used uh, uh, Dirty did use channel points to ask me, uh, what did you think of the God of High School PV trailer? So I watched the first couple minutes of uh, of God of High School um, on, on their YouTube. I don't know what countries restrictions happen in there, but they did show some stuff of, of it, like the first couple minutes of it. Um, I'm intrigued. I, I've been liking... Uh, so far, I've liked every um, Crunchyroll original. Uh, they seem to be putting... like They, they seem to be making strong choices. Um, uh, uh, I've heard that it is not just a fighting tournament anime. It is primarily a fighting tournament anime. There is a plot beyond that, is what I've been told. Uh, I know some people that really love the manga, uh, so I'm interested in that. Um, so I think that looks pretty cool. Uh, and it is a thing that I'm looking forward to this season, because like I said, I think that Crunchyroll, um, who uh, members of the Crunchyroll um, uh, marketing team that work for Verve uh, have gifted me a Crunchyroll premium account. So I watch my Crunchyroll stuff because of that. So I take my recommendations when it comes to Crunchyroll with a grain of salt, uh, specifically uh, when I'm talking positively about a show that hasn't come out yet. But uh, I think it's a cool idea. I don't know much about, you know, the, the plot of it. Uh, I know I know there are a few people that were like very so excited about it that I really like the show. So I'm looking forward to it. Uh, also, there's not a lot of action anime this season because there's not a lot of anime this season. So I'm definitely interested in, in seeing what this ends up being. Uh, I didn't love Tower of God, uh, but that's the one I've liked the least of all of their originals. So great. I'm in, I'm in for more. Uh, they haven't had that many originals. Um, but yeah, all right. Let me talk about Sachibato, uh President's Time for Battle. So this show is over. I'm still not sure what it's trying to say. Uh, the big uh, thing from the previous episode was uh, the big the thing was that, that apparently our president, our laid back president who had had a job and then was a neat for uh, like a couple of years and then took over his father's business, uh, which is the adventuring company because it's all about corporations. Um, uh But, um, uh, no, uh, I think Bam is just a blanket, uh, main character. He's just a 
super nice guy with empathy powers. Um, I don't think he's going to be revealed to be anything. He's special because he's not. I mean, his, his, he, he doesn't have any memories, so he might be someone important. But I think the point is that he's just just a good dude. Uh, that's my take. I don't know. I don't know for sure. Anyway, so if you have Funimation, Sachipato, uh President of for Battle is, an in, I think, of all of the anime this season that was based on a video game, particularly a mobile game, that this one turned out great. Uh, uh, so it turns out that our guy worked for a major company. Uh, he got punched. Uh, and he got there was some workplace violence, and he didn't bring it up because he's embarrassed because he got like knocked out by a superior who then eventually got fired. Uh, and he's capable. Uh, it turns out he's actually very capable and. A thing happens since the battles happen, and then this whole thing was we're gonna get money so we can find out stuff about my dad, and we're gonna go see a goddess. Turns out, just like everything else in this world is corporate in a corporation, uh, there are different levels of goddesses, and the goddess they ran into is a low-level clerk equivalent, and so nothing really happened except that they're gonna go. They set up for a seat. Look, they set up for a season two. And there'll be more romance in season two. And they're going to go find this dude's dad and unravel the mystery and save the world. Maybe. If if a second season happens, which I don't know why it would, because it's a perfectly okay show, but not great. Um, as I said, I mean, it's definitely better than uh, Shiraneko and that Alchemist show and um, I know some people that I know genuinely liked the uh, that other anime, uh, uh, Princess Re Redive, Princess Connect Redive. Um, hate when my goddess is only a clerk. Yeah, Epic Global World. They had to get a bunch of money to go like basically uh, talk to an oracle, but they they ran into an entry level oracle, so she could only answer so many of the, some of their questions and couldn't really help them out. Uh, which was, you know, kind of a, well, we're not going to solve this problem. Maybe season two. Uh, some people like that Princess Connect redive. Uh, I think the idea that the main character has amnesia the whole time and they don't let that shit go and it never gets resolved fully is kind of, like, I kind of reward them for that. But also, I like my main character to be a character. And he wasn't. He was the shell of a person on purpose. That was like the point was that he was just a shell of a, a of a human, uh, which I understand, but also don't want to watch. Um, so that's such a bato. It was fine. Uh, what do I want to talk about now? Oh, um, look, if you're looking for a weird show, this is this this has the um, it has the the weird uh, note. Um, uh, Extra Olympia Cyclos is the first show to come back after a hiatus. It, it took a it took a time a break more than like a week because some shows take like took like a week to get some stuff straightened out and extra time for their Chinese affiliates to finish the the fights or whatever. But this show took like actual time off um, and is back. It's five minutes. It's weird. I don't know if it's great. If you if you ever really liked like the Monty Python animation stuff, it's kind of cool. I think the songs are clever and weird in a way that I'm kind of super into. It's not for everyone. I don't even know if it's really for me, but it is new and it is ongoing. So like, yeah, Extra Olympia. Uh, I have a couple friends that are really, really into it. Uh, I'm not as much. Uh yeah, so Epic of World. So you know how like that um the animation style that uh that um um that they're kind of known for, that thing where it's like it is just a particular animated style. Um uh there was a rock something with rock in the title. There was a video game um that was a similar looking style. That's that style of animation that they're doing. Uh and it's it's intriguing. Uh it's the Gilliam style of, of animation. Uh that's that's kind of what it looks like 
more than anything else. And uh, I'm not opposed to it. Rock of Ages. Yes, thank you, Lashbrook. It's not the first time that I couldn't remember the name of that and that someone in chat has told me. But yes, the video game Rock of Ages had that art style as well. Um, but then also there's a, a lip dub thing uh, where it's clearly a person singing and you can see their lips moving, but then it's just the animated style. That's usually the closing songs, which are unique week to week. Uh, very odd show. Um, okay, so the other one I want to talk about is... Um, uh, uh, I mentioned this on Saturday. This was a show that I just randomly came across on Crunchyroll because I was hitting the random button, which is what I do uh, at the end of a season usually uh, when I run out of stuff to watch before new stuff. So Mordasan uh, uh, Wa uh, Mukchi uh, is cute. It's 26 episodes. They're three-minute episodes, which includes a song, so they're really two and a half minutes each. Uh it is a lovely, cute little show about a very quiet girl that has a lot going on in her head but doesn't always get those words out and a motor mouth that won't stop talking and various other characters they interact with in school, as a high, set in high school. It's a lovely, cute little show on, on Crunchyroll. Uh, if you're watching this after the fact on YouTube, you're watching the archive, check the show description because uh, I always list that. I list all the links that I mentioned earlier uh, half an hour ago, and I also mentioned all the anime I'm watching, uh, so that people can just cut and paste that. But also, if you hit exclamation point anime uh, in chat, uh, anime, uh, I try to update that before every stream, like right before every stream. Um, so if you want to click that in chat at any time, you can see what I was about to talk about. Or I guess you could do it early and spoil things. Uh, if you want to spoil. Um, One Piece. One Piece is back, y'all. Uh, I know a few of the other ongoings are coming back. Uh, uh, not this week, not tomorrow, but the following Tuesday. Black Clover is coming back. Boruto is coming back at some point. I don't think they've actually said exactly when. Um, so some of the ongoings are returning. One Piece is the first ongoing to return. Uh, and, uh, now I remember why I don't watch One Piece week to week, because nothing fucking happens. Y'all, I like One Piece a lot. I am a One Piece defender. I think the storytelling is very fun. I think the characters are always great. I think once the time skip happened, it got very boobery in a way that is a bummer. Uh, and some characters' art, uh, their designs have greatly suffered over the years in ways that... Uh, are a huge disappointment, but overall, I think the storytelling is still really strong, and it's still a very fucking good show, but <clears throat> nothing fucking happens in episodes. So we did get introduced to a new character. We got introduced to the character Queen, and Luffy punched some people, finally. Oh, uh, Zelda is now following. Thank you, Zelda. Welcome, welcome. Uh, thank you for the follow. Uh, so we got some character stuff, but like nothing really happened. Uh, if you like One Piece, it's back, but wait a couple weeks and then get caught up again. Because this is a show that I think right now, these days, you just want to watch a bunch of in a row. Um, because it just, because it's just like, because there's just, look. Uh, I would say a third of this episode was either an old man scared for Luffy or a crab man walking back and forth. There, Because there's a crab man, a guy who can only walk sideways, and we watched that crab man walk back and forth for a long time. Look, as I said, uh, I think that modern One Piece, 2020 and even 2019 One Piece is a show that you don't watch week to week. It is a show that you marathon. Uh, I think it is a good show, but I think that is a frustrating show. Uh, crap, man, is raising his power level. He just can't walk anywhere, but like, look, there's a long, maybe it wasn't as long as I, I think it was, but it was a long time of him just walking back and forth. Uh, and it doesn't help that the character uh, Queen had to have like a rock thing happen um like dancing and singing have to had to happen before he found out what was going on 
and that just felt like stalling and was fun stalling. If that had been the only stalling in the episode, I think I would have been more okay with what was going on. But since so much of it is just like long shots of people staring and then a cut to another shot of someone staring, I'm just kind of over it. Um, again, stuff's coming back. Uh, I know that um, they're, they're doing, I think it's a smart thing. Uh, because they only got like two or three episodes in of this season of uh, of Food Wars. They're going to restart the season basically this week. Um, and so the next new episode will be in a couple weeks, which is like, I think, a smart way to do it. Uh, in Japan anyway. Uh, so things are slowly going to start coming back. Not every show is coming back, but some of them are coming back. Uh, I still have not heard about... Um, uh, D- Diary of Our Days at Breakwater, which is a show that I really want to come back because I think it was just hitting its stride. I think the last episode was the first one that I was like totally on board with, where I think that the first two had some moments I wasn't super into. Um, and uh, uh, Gal and Dino, which is is my favorite unfinished show of the season. Gal and Dino fucking ruled and uh, rules, and I really hope that it comes back because it was so good. Um, but yeah, uh, so I don't know what I'm going to talk about on Thursday. Uh, actually, well, let me see. There might actually be at least uh, one new show to talk about on Thursday. Let me check in a chart. Uh, summer. And then... Okay, yeah, so some stuff is starting. Uh, so theoretically, I will be ta- able to talk on Thursday about a few shows. Although I think Fire Force is going to be a Friday show. So I'm just going to do this here. I'm just looking at any chart here and just go. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'll be watching Fire Force, and, uh, and there's a few shows that I'll be checking out that are coming back. Uh, new stuff, yeah, it looks like new stuff is starting this week. Uh, Lord Crashington, I can't remember the episode number uh, of One Piece. I believe it's it's well over a thousand. It is well over a thousand, I can tell you that, but I don't remember the exact number. Um, there's been a lot of it. Uh, but yeah, Dirty, uh, new stuff is starting. I believe that the first new show is um, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, I think it's happening on Thursday or maybe Friday. Uh, Project 9. No, no, that's production company. Oh, that's the literally this show that has hentai in the title. That is not something I'm going to watch. Uh, let me hit English so that I know what that was there. Uh Super, uh, yeah, Super x It The Japanese says hentai in the title, literally in the title. Like That is not a show I'm going to be watching. Uh, do not care about that. It is just a, literally, H-energy. Uh, it is the this is a hero group. It is like a sentai force of ladies uh, with a dude, basically power supply and I believe it is a romantic comedy action series and I'm sure somebody's gonna love that shit but it won't be me uh then Fire Force season two happens or at the same time uh I'll be watching that Fire Force is trash that I like because uh, uh my hope is oh boy there is a black character joining the crew and I really hope that that is not fucking terrible. I hope that is just not a fucking problem. I have no idea if it will be or not. Oh, God. And there's a new female character who's a bad character, a villain. Okay. Oh, boy. You never fucking know. Uh, Misfit of Demon King Academy. Yes. Um, I am... Uh, I will be checking that out as well. Misfit of Demon Academy. That uh, That is definitely something that I will be interested in. Uh... Yeah, that's uh, that's going to be on the 4th. 
right? Yeah, that's a Saturday. So yes, I will be checking that out. Um, uh, cause I like that stuff. I, I like an overpowered main character that people don't believe in. God of High School comes in next week. Uh, I'll be checking that out. Uh, I won't be watching Bureau of Supernatural Investigation Season 2 because I didn't watch Season 1. ReZero. I don't like ReZero. If you do, that's okay. And good, enjoy that show. I don't like it. So I'm not going to keep watching more of it. Uh, Decadence. I'm going to check that out. That looks... Decadence looks pretty fucking cool and also is a very good name it's a very it's just a very good name deca deca dense it's a giant mech vehicles fighting evil uh um so i just found food war season one on hulu i think i might check it out epic open world here's the thing about this show the person that created it started working in hentai and porn uh, and it is apparent. It's also got some fun characters. It's it's a it's a hard show to recommend. It's a not safe for work show in many ways. It does get less horny for se- as the show goes on. There are episodes where no one no one's clothes come off in a weird fantasy because they ate a piece of food that was really good. That happens less and less and then it does happen. And then it's to me even more jarring when it does. Cause you were like, Oh, I forgot about this part of the show. What the fuck? Uh, it's unfair because one of my favorite sporting characters in any anime is in that show. Cause I think that Megumi is one of the best characters. Uh, Epic says, after finishing Yakuza 0, I am more down for horny stuff. I don't quite understand. Yeah, okay. I'm just letting you know. Like, I think there's some good parts to Food Wars. I mean, some people have written it off. And if they've written it off, I understand. Like, you do you. You watch what you want to watch. Um, I think there are moments where I'm like, boo. 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 Uh, yes, dirty. It, it, it is weird. Uh, there's some not great parts of that. Uh, oh, so here's a show that is going to be horny that I will watch, and I think it looks good because uh, it's that's the whole point. It's a romant, it's a romantic comedy. Um, uh, that's uh, Uzaki Chan uh, wants to hang out. I'm gonna really like that because I've I've seen some of that show. Uh, I've seen some uh, stills of that show, and it's got like a vibe that I'm like, I just know is going to be fun. It is a fun show that I think is just going to be like, I don't know, a good time. Uh, it's a busty, lively gal, the fang, short short and busty gal that wants to like annoy her childhood friend who just wants to have like a quiet life. And it's just her like getting in, getting in his way of his quiet uh, life. And I think that's just like a fun premise. Uh but I, but it's also like it's not one of those things where it's like, wait, why did this show get so weird out of nowhere? Why did this show get so strange? It's just like, nah, that's the show. The show is the show. It knows what it is. Uh, so I'm because it because of that I am interested because it it, it seems to be aware of, of what kind of show it is and tells you right off the bat. Uh, I'm not gonna watch that gonna watch that there's a new monster musume it's it seems like it's the same characters but but it's in a different setting but it's the same characters and i don't think i'm gonna watch it that show was a lot and i don't i don't know maybe i will maybe i will i don't know this season's got so much weird stuff i'm gonna watch the first episode of uh gigabate gibate it just seems like a generic fantasy show that isn't going to have anything i want to watch in it but i am going to give the first episode a shot because uh i like the idea of bringing because there's a virus and stuff bringing like samurai from the past into the future and it was okay it, it, the fantasy doctor one yes should be a completely different creator well it looks like the same 
characters, I don't know. Uh, uh, the manga read more serious. Okay. I mean, it just looked like it was the same characters. So I thought it was the same show, but they just like redid it. Maybe it's not the same characters, but like whatever. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not. I don't think I'm going to. I might. I might watch it. I know I'm not going to watch a bunch of other stuff that's in here. Uh, so, and these shorts probably won't air. Wait, is that, why is this under shorts? That Peter Grill thing looks terrible, so I'm not going to watch that. But the, I guess that, yeah. And then a bunch of stuff is coming back, which is good. Um, uh, which monster girl anime type is Monster Musume? Uh, this is the, this is uh, dirty. Um, the High School Monsters is Interviews with Monster Girls is the actually kind of dirty and often very inappropriate show that has a lot of heart to it, at least. Um, and uh, the uh, Monster Musume was the uh, monsters aren't allowed to make, to like hang out with humans, but some of them do. And all of the ones that we meet all hang out with the same human and they all want to bone him. They all want to bone him. And then hijinks, and then hijinks ensue. And he's also got to protect them because there are people who are mean. And there are some of them that are nice and some of them that are weird. And some of them that are just very horny. It's a whole thing. Um... Oh, uh, so, uh, all monsters, uh, Falcon Boom, Pat, I'm sure you talked about already, but what was your opinion on My Next Life as a Villainous finale? So, um, folks, if you didn't catch that, uh, My Next Life as a Villainous wrapped up on Saturday, and it was one of my favorite shows of the season. While I do think that the all you need is a little bit of love kind of style of ending, uh, uh, of wrapping up the uh, student council president arc uh, by just being a good person was a little trite. Uh, overall, I like the show a lot. I think it's got it's just a quality, good anime that I was super into. Um, I love that the moment that she's like, who's going to end up with Maria? Who's going to end up with Maria? And she references the idea that there is an ending that is a harem ending. So she at least acknowledges the idea that all there's an ending where all the dudes end up with Maria. And then she kind of realizes that she's got that ending, but she says, oh, it's the friendship ending. If this was a romance, if this was a video game, you wouldn't want this ending. But for me, this is great. So she almost understands that she is, uh, um, that every character in this story wants to be with her. Uh, so I appreciate that. I like that she almost gets that, but then doesn't get it. Uh, that she's still very clueless. Uh, but yeah, overall, I thought it was nice. Um, the fact that the student council president is also like now part of the crew and like indebted to her. I'm less, yeah, I, I would have liked if he was just evil. I think I would have liked it more if he wasn't like taken over and brainwashed and had a tragic backstory. I think I would have liked it more if he, if he was just like a shitty dude that like secretly in this video game there were two villainous characters, not just the obvious one. Um, so I don't know if they're going to do it. I don't know what they're going to do with villainous because I know there's an anime or there's a manga version of the, sh of the story where she wakes up with only like a couple months left instead of years and years of knowing the truth. Uh, I, and, uh, so I don't know, but I know that there is a season two coming. I don't know if it's going to be that season two or if it's going to be just a continuation. Uh, I also like the idea. She's just like, well, the game is supposed to end, so I don't know what happens now. And I think that's kind of neat. Um, but overall, I like that show quite a bit and I'm excited to see what happens in the future with it. Um, and that came out wrong there Let's fix this here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as I said, uh, the shows, you know, there are a few shows that went on hiatus that I miss it, that I miss. Uh, just curious, Pat, 
Did you ever go back to the anime that was something about a mom doing attacks? No. I never went back to do you love your mother and her two and her multi target her twin multi target attacks, whatever that was called? Um, no. Uh, while I did there was there was a, some minor characters in that show that I thought was pretty neat, but um the conceit was something that I just didn't want to keep watching. Like they just they really wanted twin multi-target one-hit kills. Yeah, something like that. Uh, they just really wanted me to know as an audience member, do you love your mother and two-hit multi-target attacks? Yeah. They just really wanted me to, uh, as an audience member, to know that the, the mom was attractive and that the son was being shitty. Even though, in my opinion, he was not being shitty, he was being put in an awkward position. So the thing that I liked about that show was they had the Data Ray character that wanted to kill him and that was getting called out on it right away. I thought that was kind of fun. But the other character that was in the show that was a support character was a merchant character. She wasn't a healer. She wasn't um, uh, a... Because, uh, like, in um, Didn't I Say to Make Bill's Average, the healer is... Uh, uh, also a merchant. No, she was just a merchant class character. And I thought that was such a fun idea was like the little, you know, the girl that you want to protect, the sweetheart character was like, I'll get you good deals on supplies, but I can't battle at all. And I thought that was kind of a fun idea. But overall, that show made me feel uncomfortable and I did not want to watch it. So I did not watch it. Um... Uh, almost as good a title as Boofery. I don't want to get hurt, so I'll max out my defense. Oh, man, Boofery was so fun. That show is is such a light, easy watch. Uh, I, loved, I, I loved that show. Um, oh, I forgot the one thing I want to talk about because I, I want to talk about the fan service elements of things. So Sachibato did their fan service in the closing credits, the after credit sequence. They all go to the beach and you see characters in their underwear or in bathing suits, and only one of them is really revealing, which was kind of interesting. Uh, but also, the main, the president guy was in a weird, not weird, but a, a non-traditional bathing suit for a main character. He was not in board shorts. And I thought that was very interesting. And as I said, I don't know if Sachibato is good at what it's trying to do, but it is trying to do something, and I very much appreciate that it was trying to, to do something a little different. So, yeah, so they basically had him in, like, a from his shoulders into a V, like one of those bathing suits, which is just an odd choice for for a ma um, the male lead. Uh, but I thought it was, it was kind of funny. Uh, but, yeah, most of the characters in that, were wearing one piece bathing suits and I thought I was like oh that's, that's fun uh, uh, but yeah Boofery was rad if you haven't watched Boofery go check that out it's on Funimation um, that's just a weird statement to me they did their fan service during the post credit sequence yeah at Big Old World I mean to me it's that thing of like look I'm not looking for uh, when they do that episode that is at an, uh, a onsen or a beach or or a lake and it's just an excuse for characters to wear uh, bathing suit outfits or or be nude uh, yeah I'm, I'm not a, I'm not looking for that per se I think sometimes they can do well with that idea um, uh but generally, that is just meant to titillate and usually does not further the story at all. So I'm usually not super thrilled with that kind of thing. But I thought that the idea of like, hey, they went on vacation. That was what they used some of their money for was to go on a company vacation. And now they're all together on their vacation. And of course, they're wearing, they're wearing bathing suits because they're together as a company. I was like, oh, that's not, that's not terrible. I don't hate, I didn't hate it. But yeah. But yeah, it was kind of nice to be like, 
all right, it wasn't just the whole episode. It wasn't a random episode where they were like, and now we're wearing our bathing suits. It was like, oh no, where we're going to do this. We might as well do this. We're here. Ow. Hmm. Figure this out here. This is going to go. Sorry, sometimes these instructions are a little less uh, uh, detailed than I would like, but that is what you, that's the price you pay for building an old kit. Uh, Christian says, what happened at Get in the Robot? Oh, I don't know. Did something happen with Get in the Robot? Uh, they just put out a new episode the other day. Did they make some sort of announcement? Uh, watching the Castlevania show, I thought the fan service seemed part of the story. Sure, it was boring, uh, boning and nudity, but it seems like what's happening, like, yeah, I mean, like, it was often characters interacting, right? Instead of just, like, uh, a thing that is gonna, uh... Like, yeah, instead of just like, hey, check me out. Um, I see the characters. I see some fan art. Uh, but I don't know. I know they did a live stream. They put a new episode out pretty recently. It was a tag team. Uh, somebody tweeted about the channel being done. Oh, well, Christian, I don't know anything about that. Uh, I am finding out because you just tweeted that. So, uh, I don't know. Uh, I know that they are a um, an offshoot of uh, Federator. Uh, so, Federator uh, could have chosen to shut that. Uh, I think the work they've been doing... Uh, by just kind of doing light animation as they talk isn't the same as having someone in the room. Yeah, Federator presents. Uh, but I do think that it's good. Uh, if it's done, they have not tweeted about being done. So I do not know. Uh, uh, everyone again, the robot was laid off. Our dad will stream tonight and ask questions. Still figuring out some things, but true stands. Okay, yeah. I mean... I, hey, uh, anime is a big industry, but if it didn't pick up an audience, it didn't pick up an audience. If, and I don't know. I don't know how things do. I don't know how it goes, but, uh, yeah, Christian, but it's a, um, it, it wasn't like it was a fan site. It wasn't like a, it was, uh, four people got together to make a thing. It was an offshoot of a business. Uh, and also, I do know that a lot of their videos get got demonetized, some of which is their own fault, some of which was not their fault. But uh, uh, I can't imagine that channel made them, made Federator or money. Um, you know, it's not always about the money, but it has to be about the money at least sometimes. Uh, that is a shame because I think everybody worked really hard on that site and I think that they made good content. And I hope that everybody figures something out. But, but yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I can't tell you how the site did, uh, or how the, you know, how it did is compared to other, other Federator offshoots or anything like that. Um, I think they made great content, and I also believe that there is at least one video that was supposed to be coming out um, that was another. Uh, perspectives video that Yudoya was doing and I know he was fucking knocking out of the park so that's a shame uh, you know I don't like to see people lose their jobs especially creative interesting people that are doing cool work like I certainly like to see that continue but uh, yeah that's a bummer uh, if you haven't checked out Getting the Robot, now's a weird time to do that. But they uh, they make cool videos about anime. Uh, I'm having some issues getting these front panel pieces on, but I'm going to get these front panel pieces on, and then we'll wrap up 
uh, once I conclude this portion. Uh, we will go and uh, give a, um, a raid to somebody at the end of the stream. I'm going to figure that out in just a moment because uh, I do like ending our streams with, uh, with raids. It's nice to share the love. And if people are not done hanging out, they can go and give somebody a follow or, you know, watch some content, watch some people do some stuff. So we will go and raid somebody. Uh, I'm just going to, this is going to be like this. Can't figure this part out. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Figured that out. Took me a little while to get that working how I wanted it. Um, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and find somebody for us to raid because we are going to stop there by almost completing the chest and then we will move on uh, to another step in a moment. So I'm going to go ahead and get and find somebody to go. Uh, reminder, I am going to be um, playing uh, some uh, Hearthstone tomorrow at 9 p.m. Eastern. So if you like coming to hang out for that, please come at 9 p.m. Eastern uh, tomorrow uh, till 11 or so. Uh, and I will be playing Hearthstone, trying to rank up. Um, we are going to go and give... Uh, we're going to go raid Mary Kish, the lovely Mary Kish, uh, who is playing a game uh, with some people. And we'll go... Uh, We'll go give her a raid, so uh, you feel free to come along. Thanks to everybody who was here uh, and watched. Again, I will be, um, I do not know, my next build stream will be, uh, hopefully it'll be Thursday, but I will be streaming tomorrow night with some model kit building if you want to come and hang out during that. But we are going to go give Mary a raid because Mary rules. So feel free to come along. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your night. And I'll see you on the next Build with Bear in the future. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Bye.